Hey, what's up, people? Welcome to my review and in-depth analysis of Terminator Dark Fate, directed by Tim Miller. And apparently, James Cameron came back to produce and write this travesty of a story. And I just want to say right away that this film is the worst thing in existence, even outside of the Terminator franchise. Not only is this one of the worst the worst Terminator film ever made or Terminator property ever made. It's also one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And James Cameron should be ashamed of himself. James Cameron is one of the greatest American directors. I am not taking that away from him whatsoever. He will always be one of the greatest American directors. However, I want to say for the new millennium, his filmography for the new millennium is lacking to say the least. I'm not a fan of Avatar. And because of this film, I no longer want to see any more James Cameron movies. I refuse to watch any James Cameron product after this disgrace that was Terminator Dark Fate. The fact that he came back and wrote this story... And thought it was okay and adequate. I just I just don't get it. And one of the things that's so maddening. And that really pisses me off about James Cameron. When it comes to this. Is James Cameron loves to criticize. right? He loves to criticize other films. And I remember him criticizing Alien 3. Because they killed off Newt and Hicks. And, you know, I wasn't a big fan of that. But compared to this, compared to what they did in Terminator Dark Fate, that is nothing. And I think he is a total hypocrite. How can you go and say, go and give criticism towards Alien 3 for killing off Hicks and Newt, but then go ahead and kill off John Connor in the first, like, minute of the new Terminator film, Terminator Dark Fate? To me, that is infinitely worse. That would be like killing off Ripley, in my opinion, and Aliens. And this guy, he, I've also seen him criticize Terminator Salvation, criticize Terminator 3, criticize Terminator Genesis, even though he'll, he'll come out and promote the film be like, oh, Terminator Genesis, look, this looks great. This is this is the true sequel to Terminator 2. And then when it comes out and doesn't do well, he'll, he'll do an about face and give criticism. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, James Cameron, that Terminator Dark Fate is the biggest piece of shit to ever exist. Not only did I find the film insulting for killing off John Connor within the first 20 seconds of the movie. And yes, Tim Miller confirmed that that was James Cameron's idea, which is just, it just totally illustrates to me that James Cameron doesn't give a crap about Terminator anymore. So it's like, well, if you don't care about the series anymore, why did you go and pursue the rights? You know, it's just give it to somebody else because I'll tell you this, the people that made Terminator 3, the people that made Terminator Salvation, the people that made Terminator Genesis, the people that made Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles, they did an infinitely better job than this, even though there's some artistic decisions in those films I strongly disagree with. I, I still feel like they came from a place where they 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 care about the Terminator uh, franchise. They at least gave a crap. But killing John Connor off like that, that to me just shows like, like, like you don't care, man. And not only that, but then basically they did a Force Awakens over here. They basically replaced John Connor with the girl. And now the leader of the resistance is a girl, right? And it follows the same, the same story beats as Terminator 1. And it's just, except, except the film tries to be on this anti-motherhood hype, which is another thing that I found disgusting. So before I get into that, I just want to say like, you know, I try not to get political with these reviews because in my point of view, 99% of the time, these political commentaries that we, that we take from movies, it's subjective, right? And I, I kind of fought tooth and nail when reviewing the 
sequel trilogy for the Star Wars, the Disney trilogy, not to get into the politics, right? Not to get into political commentary. There were so many people saying that it was woke, it was feminist, it was radical feminist, it was anti this, anti that, you know? And I was like, well, it really depends on the person watching, right? And it's subjective. But I digress. When it comes to Terminator Dark Fate, I just have to say it. This is literally the wokest movie I've ever seen in my life. Like, it is completely blatant. More, It's more evident than anything in the new Star Wars, the Disney Star Wars projects, which allegedly have woke stuff, right? But to me, this is just the most blatant attempt at being woke and leftist po- political commentary in a movie that I've ever seen. It's disgusting. Not only did I find this film offensive for what it did to John Connor, killing him off in the first 30 seconds, just right away like he was nothing, like he was not important to this franchise at all when he was the heart and soul of this franchise, him and Sarah, right? Not only did I find that offensive, but the woke political commentary in this film is disgusting. It's disgusting. And I find it, it, it's, it just shows the contempt that the filmmakers had for their audience. Not only does this film give the middle finger to the, star, to the Terminator franchise, but it gives a middle finger to the audience as well. Unless you agree with what they're preaching here. Example. This film is anti-motherhood. And I find that completely offensive. Right? For somebody that values motherhood. That values women. Right? And to me, if this film is going to be anti-motherhood. You're essentially anti-woman. So this film tries to be all oh, feminist, radical feminist. But to me, this film is anti-women. It's anti-women. And let me tell you why. And there's a point in this film that I could never get past. Like, I have not been able to finish this movie. That's how awful it is to me. I haven't been able to finish this movie Because every time I get to this point in the film, I just have to turn it off in disgust. Because it's disgusting. And it's the scene where the heroes, the protagonists, you have the female protector. I don't know what her name is. I don't care. Um, The androgynous looking uh, woman. uh, The one that was sent to protect uh, the new female, John Connor. I I forgot her name too. Who cares, right? They're all on the train with Sarah Connor. Right. And then Sarah Connor, they set up the scene so that Sarah Connor is making the assumption that, yeah, her name's Danny. That's right. The new leader of the resistance, the female John Connor, Danny, is is Sarah's making the assumption that Danny's going to give birth to the leader of the resistance like like she did. Right. So she makes this assumption and she's like, oh, the Terminator wants to kill you for what's in your womb, for for what's for being for giving birth to the leader of the resistance. And then the female protector is like just just basically says to her, like, no, you're not you're you're not going to give birth to the leader of the resistance. You are the leader of the resistance, Danny. And the way that it's just delivered, it's just so heavy handed and so it just, it just reeks of preaching, right? It's like turning to the audience and waving your finger around, pointing your finger at the audience and being like, oh, you thought this was going to be like the original movie where the female is only important because she gives birth to the leader of the resistance, a man? No. Well, you're wrong. She's the leader of the resistance. She can have value too. She doesn't have to be a mother. Like, it's like totally like, like giving the middle finger to motherhood, in my opinion. Like, basically saying that Sarah is not important or as important because she's a mother. But she'd be more important if she were the leader of the resistance. And, you know, I I found that to be despicable, right? And I hate the way that this film delivers that. Like, that's the best that you could come up with 
Like James Cameron was a part was away from this franchise for like 20 plus years and he comes back and this is the best idea that you have. It's fucking pathetic. I think like five or six people wrote this fucking worthless piece of shit. And this is the best thing that they could fucking come up with, man. Like let's lecture the audience as to why a female resistance leader would be better than somebody that gave birth to the leader of the resistance, right? I mean, it's despicable. Look how many people wrote this piece of shit. One, David Goyer, Justin Rhodes, Billy Ray, James Cameron, Charles Egley, Josh Friedman, Joe. <laughs> I mean, it's like, this is fucking ridiculous. You got, these people got paid thousands of dollars to write this worthless piece of shit. The, okay. More woke bullshit. The scene where, uh, the scene where the protagonists basically get, get detained by ice, right? Now we're going to have the, this radical leftist commentary about how we should have open borders. So the, the protagonists get detained by ice at the border, at the Mexican border, and then when the androgynous female protector, whatever the fuck her name is, who gives a shit, is in there trying to free them, she has the comment to say, uh, where are the prisoners, or free the prisoners, and then one of the ICE, one of the ICE uh, troopers or whatever officers says, oh, we don't call them prisoners, we call them detainees. Dude, it really felt like it literally felt like they should have just broke the fifth wall, turned to the screen and said, it is wrong. Abolish ICE. It is wrong to detain illegal immigrants. They are prisoners and these are concentration camps and we need to have open borders. Shame on you. Don't call them detainees. Calling them detainees does not is only trying to rationalize the fact that we have concentration camps at our southern border and there's people being torn away and families being separated. Shame on you, conservative Republicans. Shame on you. You guys are the bad guys. That's literally what I felt while watching this fucking piece of shit, man. It truly is despicable. And, you know, it's like... It's like this film just utilized this opportunity to make a new Terminator movie just to give a political commentary. And you know, I, I, I am Hispanic, right? I am Hispanic, but I'm not one of these people that, that is obsessed with my racial identity. You know why? Because I identify as a human. Just because I'm one race, it doesn't mean anything to me, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like... This whole obsession with identity politics is absurd. Everywhere I see it, and I feel like it's absurd. And I have to divulge how I feel about this, man. It's like, I'm not one of those people like, oh, I only feel comfortable around other Hispanic people. Are you kidding me? Hispanic people will betray other Hispanic people, man. Just because you're from, you're the same race, the same gender, the same orientation, the same religion, it doesn't mean shit. And that's why I say I'm human, man. I don't walk into a build a place and, and and automatically start counting who's there like me. Is there other men like he? Is there any other straight Hispanic males in the room that I can identify with? Who gives a shit? I could be betrayed by another uh, straight Hispanic male. Man, I'm human. I'm me. There's nobody like me. I don't give a shit if you're the same race as me. And I don't give a shit if you're a different race as me. You knew the writers when they picked up that pen or stood at that keyboard to write this story. They were like, oh yeah, let's do it, man. Let's make the main protagonist Mexican. Oh yeah, and let's have it take place at the border so we can make a commentary about ICE. Oh, that's great. Let's make ICE the, with some of the bad guys, right? Yeah, and let's have an action sequence where the Terminator comes in and he blends in with the other bad guys, right? ICE, he blends in with them because they're bad, right? They're like modern day Nazis and, and the, the, the illegal immigrants, they, they're like modern day Jews and we can have them in the concentration camps and give a little commentary commentary. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, to take a beloved franchise, a beloved story. I mean, remember what the original Terminator was about. It was a commentary about humanity as a whole. It wasn't 
picking and choosing nationalities or races or genders. I felt like it spoke to humanity as a whole, right? About how man is constantly at war with himself. But this movie, it draws a, a, a line in the sand, right? Basically saying, if you believe this, you're the bad guy. If you believe that, you're the bad guy. You know, and, and, and I feel like it's a complete disgrace. So not only do you have that stuff going on, but you got the whole like disrespect of the franchise by killing John Connor off going on. Plus, there's worse stuff going on too, man. I mean, I couldn't even finish this film before we got to the Arnold Schwarzenegger part. Because Arnold Schwarzenegger, he like they advertise it like he's like in this movie. Man, this guy's in this movie for like 20 minutes, man. This movie sucks. Right? But when Arnold Schwarzenegger shows up, it's even more disrespect to the franchise to Terminator because Arnold Schwarzenegger shows up and he is emasculated now, man. The Terminator is emasculated. Now, if we look at where we started off with this franchise, how frightening the Terminator was like literally frightening. He was like Jason Voorhees, man, like Freddy Krueger, like a horror icon. And then we see like this piece of shit He's like domesticated now. He he sells drapes. And, and no, he doesn't have sex. He's just he's just there for emotional support to the wife. And I'm like, what a fucking joke. What a fucking joke, man. This movie is it's like literally the worst thing ever. Right? As far as the worst entry into a franchise ever, in my opinion. Like, for instance, if you are a fan of Aliens and Predator, automatically, you 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 know that Alien vs. Predator Requiem is probably like the worst entry out of that entire franchise, out of that entire series, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that Terminator Dark Fate makes Alien vs. Predator Requiem look like Citizen Kane. It, looks, it makes it look like Apocalypse Now, man, like The Godfather. That's how bad I think Terminator Dark Fate is. Um, same thing with, let's say like Rise of Skywalker, which I think is like the worst thing in the Star Wars series, right? <laughs> I'd rather watch the Rise of Skywalker than Terminator Dark Fate any day, any day. That's how awful and how insulting this movie is to me. I think this film is trash. So I'll try to review it as best as I can. But like I said, I never, I never saw the ending to this movie. I just cannot for the life of me get through certain scenes. And, and that is, I, a few movies do that to me, man, but this is one of them. Oh, so anyway, like I said, this is the force awakens of the Terminator franchise, but it's like infinitely worse. This movie copies all the other movies and pretends to be original. So this movie thinks it's like clever and it thinks it's original, but it copies all the other movies. Not only does it, not only does it copy the first two and just gender swap John Connor for the female John Connor, Danny, but it does, it bites off the other movies too. It bites off the TV show and the other movies, but it thinks it's like doing something new, but it's pathetic. And even though Linda Hamilton is back as Sarah Connor, it's a goddamn afterthought. Same thing with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger back, and it's an afterthought. It's the McKenzie show. Yeah, that that's 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 who that andro androgynous female protector is. Uh, her name is McKenzie, right? So it's the McKenzie show. You're watching this thing. You go into this movie, think you're going to get Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger back in action. And you are disappointed as fuck, man, because this is the McKenzie show. She's the main star and she sucks. She's terrible. So another thing is how the Terminator, meaning Arnold Schwarzenegger knew that, that, knew the coordinates of where the new Terminator was going to pop up. I mean, it's just so fucking dumb, right? But we'll get into that. So I just feel like how this Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger kills young John, 
right? He kills young John. So apparently there was another T-800 that was sent back in time to hunt down John Connor, aside from the one that we saw in Terminator 2, right? So this this Terminator is successful in killing John, but it's irrelevant because Skynet isn't going to come to to fruition because uh, of Terminator 2, because they were able, the protagonists were able to destroy Cyberdyne. But what I want to say is this. The question that I want to ask is this. Wouldn't the Terminator, the one that was successful in killing John, know that Skynet wasn't created because Judgment Day passed? And as a result of that, wouldn't he prioritize and make prioritize trying to make Skynet a reality again? Because you have to remember... The whole reason why Arnold Schwarzenegger had to sacrifice himself at the end of Terminator 2 was because he still existed. There was one more chip. Remember, they threw the chip away from the, the, the Terminator 1 chip. They threw it away. And then they thought and then Sarah and John thought everything was all good. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, no, man, there's one more chip. And then he points to his brain, his head, and he's like, I have to kill myself. Right, in order to make sure a hundred percent that Skynet doesn't come into existence, right? So the point is, wouldn't the Terminator that was successful in killing John, when Skynet doesn't come into existence, when Judgment Day comes and goes, the date, I mean, the date that Judgment Day doesn't happen, wouldn't wouldn't that Terminator be like, okay, I need to go and give this chip. I'm going to go and walk into the most sophisticated, uh, technologically advanced agency, go in there and be like, look, I am a robot sent from the future. Reverse engineer me. Wouldn't he do that to try and make Skynet into existence again? I mean, and, and supposedly James Cameron came up with this fucking story. What a fucking idiot. As much as I love the guy for, for his past filmography, what an idiot. What an idiot everybody that wrote this story is, man. And I, I feel like Tim Miller, he got the biggest, the biggest uh, amounts of criticism for this film, for this travesty. And I don't even think he's directed another film. But it's like, hey, man, I got no, I mean, Tim Miller, like, I, I remember that he antagonized the audience in an interview. And, you know, and I think he's a piece of shit for doing that. However, I think the writers deserve to be, to be basically blacklisted from Hollywood from writing this fucking piece of shit, man. Like, seriously, man, I will never watch a James Cameron movie ever again. I do not care about Avatar 2, 3, 5, 9, all the way through 20. Who gives a shit about that CGI shit fest, man? I cared about Terminator. You know, and all I'm going to say is this. Thank God for Terminator Zero, the new animated anime Terminator series on Netflix and review for that is coming soon, but back to reviewing this piece of shit. So I don't like Mackenzie. I don't like her at all. She's painful to watch. She's a terrible protagonist. I don't, I I just, I just can't stand it. This isn't my type of hero that I want to be following. And not only do I not like this character, but you know, no offense to the actress. I've seen her in other movies and she's a good actress. I'm talking about the character, not the actress. But I just, I think it's dumb that she needs meds. That It's like, how efficient of a protector is she going to be if she constantly needs to take some drug in order to, in order to be at 100% in order to protect Danny, the female John Connor? Like, it's, it's, it's stupid. Right. And is in a, and she's modified, right? She's been altered or whatever. She's a hybrid, half human, half cyborg, kind of like, um, kind of like the protagonist from Terminator Salvation, right? Sam Worthington's character. And it's like, okay, well, that's not an original idea. And the Sam Worthington character was infinitely better because he wasn't a drug addict that needed to take medicine in order to be an efficient uh, machine, uh, to, to be a protector, right? I mean, it's stupid. 
It's stupid. So now Skynet is no longer Skynet. Now it's Legion. Even though it's the same goddamn thing. Right? They try they try to like come up with this new thing and it's like, oh well what a coincidence. Legion also has T eight hundreds too or whatever. Endoskeleton uh robots. What a coincidence. Oh, and what a coincidence. They look exactly like Skynet's endoskeleton robots too. What a coincidence. I mean it's so stupid. If you're gonna do that, why not just have it still be Skynet? I mean, the other films did that. <laughs> so it's like I don't understand. It's like oh oh yeah, Legion. What a great idea, even though it's exactly like Skynet. It's so stupid, man. And so basically, Mackenzie, she needs. She's a drug addict now. She needs her over-the-counter medicines in order to be efficient. Otherwise, she overheats. <sighs> Dumb. All right. What what an efficient protector, right? <sighs> and. I also want to say that this new Terminator, this Mexican Terminator, <laughs> is 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 not intimidating at all. It's a total joke. Worst Terminator ever. I mean, he looks like Pee Wee Herman to me. And I remember people being excited. Oh, we're going to get a Mexican Terminator. And I'm like, okay, the first thing that comes to mind... When I think of like a Mexican Terminator, right, or or a Hispanic Terminator, is Danny Trejo, man. You know, do you know who Danny Trejo is from Machete? He was a frequent guest of Robert Rodriguez's movies. That motherfucker should have been the Terminator because he is a mean looking motherfucker. Right. Like I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a Mexican Terminator. They better hire Danny Trejo, man. I mean, uh, did you see how he was in Desperado and Machete? Dude, that dude was born to be the first Hispanic Terminator. No. Instead, they get this Pee Wee Herman looking motherfucker. What the hell? And he's just not intimidating at all. I mean, okay, you don't have to be this big buff dude, right? Patrick, uh. The dude that played the T-1000, right? He, he, Robert Patrick, he proved that, right? He proved that, but he was still scary and intimidating as fuck. Same thing with the TX from Terminator 3. You don't got to be this big thing, but this dude, this Pee Wee Herman motherfucker is a joke. It's a joke. Terrible, terrible. And not only that, but the fighting. The fighting is this over-the-top CGI bullshit that's what it is it's not impressive at all and this whole over the top cgi bullshit in these terminator movies really started with the previous entry terminator genesis right i mean but but here it's just it's just worse because at least terminator genesis had things that i enjoyed but this movie has absolutely nothing that i enjoy and i really mean that absolutely nothing I mean, I wanted to enjoy Linda Hamilton's return, but I just found it frustrating and irritating. It's ridiculous. She's too old. You got this grandma in here trying to be Rambo, and it just looks absurd. It looks ridiculous. And I felt the same way about when uh, Jamie Lee Curtis came back with the new Halloween movies, and she's like... She's like kicking uh, Michael Myers' ass. Like she has all these booby traps in place and she's like a warrior now. And she has a shotgun and she and she's like, I'm ready for you, Michael. And, I, and, and then she, I remember one scene in that movie, not to go on a tangent, but in one scene like Michael slams her against the wall. And it's like, dude, in real life, your 75, 80 year old ass would be dead. You would break your neck, right? And trust me, I have taken care of elderly people. A simple fall and they break their fucking hip and they're out of it for six months, man. So same thing here with Linda Hamilton as as Sarah Connor. I, I love Linda Hamilton, man. I'm grateful for her contributions to this franchise. But it just came across as, as pathetic. And sure, maybe a different director could have stepped in and, and a better writer could have came in and wrote something better for her and, and something better for her. I'm not trying to say that that she is not of use, 
right? I'm not trying to say that she no longer has talent, that she couldn't be put to use, that she couldn't have come in and done a great job. It's just the directing and the writing. It didn't do her justice whatsoever, and it comes across as cringe, man. Seeing this 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 old lady trying to be like Rambo was cringe as fuck, man. Seriously. And when it comes to this female John Connor character's uh, the imagery of her being the resistance leader, it's just laughable. I mean, you have this four foot ten little girl that thinks she's tough because her hair is in cornrows. And I mean, and th- that's that's the way this stuff is conveyed to me. It's like she's not believable at all as a leader. It's like just because you have your hair in corn rolls and you look tough doesn't make you a leader. It's like it's like these car- these these filmmakers, these writers that try to come up with these quote unquote strong female characters think that if you make a woman act masculine that that automatically makes her strong. But but that's not what makes a female a strong female character. That's not what does it. What does it is their character, their persona, their attitude, their story. And Danny's, this female John Connor character story is just a ripoff of John Connor's. I mean, it just it's just not good at all to me. It's worse than what they did with Ray in the Star Wars Disney trilogy. This is worse because this is laughable. She's just not believable to me at all um those sequences of her in the future uh being the leader and saving uh, Mackenzie it just comes across as pathetic I I really feel like like any anybody that contested her leadership would be able to beat this little girl's ass easily so it's like, and also we don't get to see any cunning from her. We don't get to see any kind of strategy from her. We don't get to see like this, this brilliance from her mind, from her thinking, from her critical skills, from her uh, plotting and strategy and things like that. We don't get to see any leadership qualities. That's it. We do not get to see any leadership qualities from this female John Connor character whatsoever. Now, that being said, the scene where she loses her brother, that was sad. I actually felt some emotion there. It was the only time I actually felt emotion in this story, in this movie. Other than that, I felt nothing. It was just upset the entire time. And coming back to this over-the-top CGI action sequences, I just want to say the special effects are not impressive. They're not impressive. I mean, you go back and you watch the special effects from Terminator 2 and the stunts from Terminator 2 and the action pieces, the 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 things that they set up. And it's just a million times better than anything in this film. I mean, go back to Terminator 2, that sequence in the Cyberdyne building, right? You got Arnold Schwarzenegger coming out with this minigun, lighting up the police, no CGI there, just... Just pure octane action, high octane action. You got police cars blowing up. You got Arnold Schwarzenegger with the minigun. That's it. Then you got the T-1000 jumping out of the window of the Cyberdyne building, crashing into the helicopter, a real helicopter, not a CGI helicopter, a real one, smashing his head in the helicopter and morphing into the pilot. And then this epic chase sequence ensues in which this helicopter is chasing this armored truck and then it just ends up uh in this big showdown in that uh, in that factory i mean just all that very little cgi right the only thing that was really cgi was the t-1000 and it's like when you do it sparingly it looks better but when i watch the action sequences in this film i'm just like not impressed it's all cgi boring um really really i feel like the filmmakers do not know what made the original terminator so special and you know what 
even though I'm not a big fan of Terminator 3, the action sequences in that were amazing. The the sequence with the crane, that was epic, right? I love that. But it's like it's like you don't get things like that anymore. Everybody just defaults to CGI because it's cheaper. And and it's really unfortunate. Now now we come to like some real just convoluted and contrived nonsense right here. And, and what I'm talking about is how Arnold Schwarzenegger knew that the Rev-9, the new Terminator, was coming. It was coming, right? How, how, do they know, how does he know, right? And how does he know to text Sarah and all this stuff? And basically the new Terminator, uh, not the new Terminator, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, the one that killed John Connor at the beginning of this film, he f- developed a conscience and feel sorry for killing John. I realize what I did to you as a mother and I want to make it up to you. I'm going to let you know when other Terminators are coming through. But I- I'm like, I'm like, hold up. Does this even make sense? So, you're telling me that this Terminator that's basically stranded outside of time, rather than, like, take it upon itself to have Skynet come back by basically just giving his chip to some to some scientist or engineer that can reverse engineer him in order for Skynet to come into existence again. Rather than doing that, he developed the conscience and feels bad for fulfilling his mission, which was essentially to kill John, which is stupid. You know, this whole idea like, oh, I completed my mission. I am worthless. So I will develop a conscience. Oh, I feel sorry for what I did. I feel so. It's like so much for these Terminators being relentless killing machines, man. Thanks a lot, James Cameron. Thank you very much for taking a fat dump on your legacy. Um, so anyways, rather than the T-800 that killed John, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, ha- aiding in Skynet coming back, he's going to be like aware of Legion sending back Terminators. But I'm like, how does that even make sense if Skynet doesn't exist no more? Why would he even, why would he even have a connection to Legion, right? Like... Like, did he not know it was Legion or did he not care? So basically, the movie explains it like this. And I think it's really contrived and, and convoluted, man. So supposedly some chronal displacement occurs when a Terminator sent back in time, a Rev-9 is sent back in time, and there's a shockwave through time that is measurable for, before the event. And the T-800 knows the coordinates because... The shockwave is measurable. And then he lets Sarah Connor know a Terminator is going to show up. And I'm like, what? Like, what kind of nonsen- nonsensical bullshit is this? It's like, it's like just some shit that they pulled out their ass. Not even some pseudoscientist, like, wannabe, uh, 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 wannabe astrophysicist, quantum physics motherfucker would come up with some dumb shit like this, man. It's like, What? I, but at this point in the story, you just don't care. You just don't care at this point in the movie. You're like, whatever, just please get it over with. I can't take it anymore. And in addition, I have other questions that just make me scratch my head because the plot is so convoluted and nonsensical. And I just want to, I just ask, how would the commander from the new future where Legion exists know where the Terminator from the old future would be, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, it may be the answers in the movie, but I really don't give a shit because the movie sucks. And lastly, we come to the point where I just couldn't watch the movie anymore. So, and this is where we get introduced to Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then we find out that he's domesticated. Now he's a stepfather he doesn't have sex. He's just there for the wife for emotional support. And he has a drape store. He makes drapes. And yeah. And this combined with the scene in which the, we get the uh, lecture about how a woman can have worth. She doesn't need to be a mother. That's when I turn this movie off. And I never want to watch it ever again. 
This is easily the worst Terminator thing in existence. I hate this movie with every fiber of my being. And I will never support another James Cameron project ever again. That's how pissed off I am about this film. (sighs) Nevertheless, there's some good out there for Terminator fans. And that is Terminator Zero. The new anime that has just been released by Netflix. And I can't wait to review it for you folks. But when it comes to Terminator Dark Fate, this film is an F. An F minus. It's awful. It's terrible. Even if you want to watch this film out of curiosity, do not. Don't waste your time watching this movie. Watch any other film in this franchise except this one. It's a complete waste of your time. Thank you guys for listening to this review and in-depth analysis of Terminator Dark Fate. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and share. One love, people. And last but not least, take care.